When it comes to basic operations with numbers, we're all experts. Addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Imagine you don't have a calculator, just a sheet of paper, a pen, and your brain. Try to answer this. What is the square root of 10 and the square root of 31? Not so immediate, right? Yes. There is a simple method anyone can learn to calculate any square root by hand. Let's take a step back. Why is calculating a square root by hand so complicated? We distinguish two cases. This is easy. These are numbers that can be written as k squared for some integer k. For example, the square root of 4 is 2. The square root of 100 is 10. Second case, n is not a perfect square. Here the problem begins. The square root of n is an irrational number, meaning it cannot be written as a fraction. It has infinite decimal digits that never repeat in a periodic pattern. This means we can never calculate it exactly. We can only approximate it with more or less precision. But enough talk. You are here to discover how to approximate square roots using only paper and pen. First, take your calculator and write down the square root of two. Memorize the first four decimal digits. We will use them soon to compare our results. Now let's play a game. Pick any positive number and call it x0. For example, start with x0 equals one. From there, calculate the next term of the sequence using this formula. Then continue with x2. In general, we define the recursive sequence as follows. Does this look familiar? By the third term, the sequence already gives a value very close to the square root of two, calculated solely with additions and divisions, starting from any initial value. Okay, but I promised you can calculate any square root, not just that of two. Wait a moment. Did you notice the number two in the numerator? The sequence converges to the square root of two because of it. What if we replace it with any positive number a? Exactly. To approximate the square root of a, just pick any x zero greater than zero and define. For example, to calculate the square root of seven, iterate this formula with a equals seven, stopping when you're satisfied with the accuracy. For the square root of 230, just consider the sequence and so on. Great, but why does this sequence really work? Let's start from the beginning and frame the problem mathematically. Let a and x zero be greater than zero and consider the sequence. Then as n tends to positive infinity, the sequence converges to the square root of a. Why? Well, mathematics is not based on appearances, but on facts. We need a proof. Step one, prove that the limit exists. We use a fundamental result about sequences. If a sequence is monotone, meaning either increasing or decreasing, and bounded, then it definitely converges to a finite limit. But first, some important observations. By definition of the sequence, and since x zero is greater than zero, it's clear that every term x sub n is positive. To simplify things in this video, we consider the case when x zero is greater than or equal to the square root of a. In fact, the result holds for any x zero greater than zero, but to keep it simple and the video interesting, let's limit ourselves to this assumption. Step two, the sequence is bounded above by the square root of a, how? Consider the quantity and do some algebraic manipulations. After recognizing a perfect square, we see that. Hence, the sequence is bounded above by the square root of a. Step three, the sequence is monotonically decreasing. Calculate the difference between two consecutive terms. 
From step two, since x sub n squared is greater than or equal to a, the numerator is less than or equal to zero. And the denominator is positive because x sub n is positive. Therefore, the sequence is decreasing. Step four, calculate the limit value. Having shown the sequence is monotone and bounded, it must converge. Call the limit L. Using the recursive definition, we have that L must satisfy. Solving this, we get two solutions. L equals positive or negative square root of A. But since the sequence is positive, the limit cannot be negative. So L equals the square root of A. And there you have it. Now you just have to stop relying on your calculator and start using your brain a little more. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss other content and mathematical secrets.